Today, we do something a bit different. We're looking at one of the best mutual fund managers equity fund portfolio, which is from Afin Huang. Now guys, just to let you know, we do own some shares mentioned on the slides. And as usual, none of what we say is financial advice. Please speak to a pro if you want that sort of advice. What we do is purely educational. Now guys, if you're really interested in building a six to seven figure portfolio, we've got the perfect solution for you. Head over in the comment section or the description to sign up for our free masterclass where you can get all these proven steps to achieve it. Okay, so Jonathan, let's get into it. Yes. Um, just some background. This mm. is one of the most uh, longest running fund since 1993. Yes. Correct. Right. Correct. So that's why we decided to pick this. There's actually other funds as well. So we want to clarify that this fund alone does not represent all the returns, mm. yep. all the Afin Huang portfolios. Uh, they have quite a lot, like dozens. So let's get right into it. So what we'll do is we compare it to KLCI. Yes. We look at the April to December performance as well as their one year performance as well. Mm. Some of their sector holdings, stock holdings, and of course, what are some of the best and worst stocks. So this is how they've done since uh, 1993. Yeah. Uh, they've actually trailed the market for most of their history. And I think only in this period. Yeah, in 2022. Uh, they outperform. Yes. <laughs> so, but of course, of course, if you started investing with them in, let's uh, call 2000 it and eight, late 2008. Yeah. I think today it will be uh, my eyeball is something like uh, yeah, yeah, many, many X. X. Yes, correct. Okay. okay. So this is the one year performance. So if you notice right over here, yeah, uh, they are actually down 22.5%. Uh, if you compare that with KLCI, which is down 6.7, I mean, uh, yeah. they're actually doing it's we underperforming, did, underperforming on a one-year uh, basis. Yes. But what is interesting to note is that this is from November last year to October, end of October this year. Mm. So I suspect it's a little bit higher today. It's not losing that much money or maybe even positive, who knows, uh, because of the stocks that they hold, which we will go into if you stay all the way sure. up to the end. Okay, so uh, this is just a quick overview on the 2022's uh, performance. Yes. So specifically, it's going to be April 2022 to December 2022's uh, market yeah. value. So if you look at on the, I say, is it uh, eight months basis? Yes. Yeah, it's like up 0.31%. Yes. I mean, at least it's up, it's positive. So yeah. that's, that's uh, pretty good. And if you look at their sector holdings for April 2022, you notice that the largest one is actually the industry product and services. Yep. Uh, later, I, they will, we will dive a little bit into what stocks they are, are they holding inside that particular sector. The next one is going to be financial sec service, which constitute about 17% of their holdings yeah. and then followed by plantation and uh, technology. Yeah, so these four are the major sector holdings. Uh. Yeah. Okay, so how have they been performing for each sector? So if you notice, right, telecom has been doing the best. Yes. And that's also a reason why they are performing the best. Mm -hmm. uh, we can review here is because they only hold, holding one stock. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you kind of can guess it already la, after, after the next few slides. And if you look at the rest, it's all actually doing pretty decent except for the energy industry uh plantation as well as utility. So yeah. So what's interesting is that they are quite diversified. Yeah, super and diversified. Yet they have not done well. It just goes to show la, right how badly the economy, I mean sorry, not the economy, the market mm. has decided to dump a lot of Correct. stocks. I mean they've hold for like 40 stocks. Yeah in their so portfolio. This year is industrial, right? Uh yeah blue color one Financial. is industrial. Yes, correct. Okay. So yeah, I mean, if I wouldn't be going through every single sectors, uh, every single stocks, right? Yep. If you want to take your time, you can actually just pause this video and just have a look at each of these, uh, their holdings for April, 2022. So yep. uh, let's just move on first. Okay, so this is the top 10 best one. Uh, and this is based on April, 2022 uh, against December, 2022's uh, market value performance. So if you can see the best one is MPI. Yeah. Uh, which actually they managed to still make money about almost yeah. more than two times actually. Yes. Yeah. When MPI is actually like down a bit, I, I believe, because there's like a, a, a correction, but they managed to get it, uh, I think quite early uh, in yeah. 2020. And also it's important to know that 
uh, so this is from April to December, right? Yes, correct. April so to December. So this is important that the data is a bit, I wouldn't say misleading, but it's based on April, which is correct. quite uh, close to the low. Uh, no, the April one is because they actually reported, because uh, they do like those annual kind of yes, reporting, yes, yes. right? So we don't know whether this aggregate cost is really April 2022 or is it before that? I see. Yeah. Okay. It could okay. be, be they, they bought it, but they didn't sell it. Is the aggregate cost as at April 2022. April 2022. Okay, Correct. so here's, yes. here, here are their biggest winners. Huh? Yes, yes. So you can see some, some, of the thing, some of the companies that, you know, personally I've looked at and we've quite liked, like MPI is one of them, mm. Genetech. Yep. Syntax, uh, uh, Timecom, Time Com, right? Mm. Which is in our Fire Pro portfolio for those of you who are spoiler, curious. Spoiler, spoiler. Yeah, spoiler. <laughs> yeah. Uh, FBI, that has been, we've done a deep dive program on that mm. before. Yep. And then they SKP. The banks. Yeah. Oh. SKP is one of the best performing stocks, like period. Correct. But we can see from this, right? It's one of the best performing, but based on the aggregate costs, they're only up 26%, which means that they bought into it quite recently. Mm. And of course, it was probably impacted by the whole labor issue. Yes. So that's what probably dragged their returns yep. down a bit. Uh, but that is just the top 10 best one. Yep. Uh, now we like look at the top 10 worst performing. Yes. So the worst performing one is actually Tawin Holdings, followed by DNEX, I believe, they actually kind of fomoed into it. So for D next, right? Yeah, yep. for D next. So I think they bought it at around, uh, if I can recall correctly, it's around uh, 70 cents or two okay. ringgit. Okay. Which is actually pretty high. But then yeah. because there's like a, I mean, there's like the an allegation. News, right? Right? Yeah, 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 correct. Uh, yeah, and hence the stock price is actually down. And then, yeah, I mean, you can just pretty much see the top 10 worst stock. But this is, doesn't mean that they are bad stocks. Maybe it's because it's just uh, the market correction. Yeah, you never know. Who knows? Maybe they are funda fundamentally they are still intact. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. That's yeah, yeah of course, there's there's Tawin. So some context is that a lot of so Tawin is very interesting because a lot of um, fund managers that I know, friends, they are actually very bullish on Tawin mm. because they want contracts for right. their wiring stuff and all that. Um, but as you can see, over the past one or two years, right, it hasn't done really well. Mm. I don't have much comment on NCT Hub Singh. Reservoir Link is quite interesting because they are technically linked to oil and gas. Yes, yes. And yet that has been down since when they bought it. Probably down a lot more if it wasn't for the oil and gas yep. boom. I, that's my guess. Scope is another one that uh, they had a turnaround plan which didn't quite really work out. I know comments on Ta'an. I know PIE is also a favorite of uh, iCapital. Mm. Yep. which is another fund that we'll probably look into in the future. The down 25%, but from what I see, the fundamentals is quite solid. OM Holdings, which is another interesting uh, company as well. Mm -hmm. Something perhaps we will talk about in the future and then YTL Corp. I have no thoughts on that. Yeah. So you, yeah, this is, these are roughly uh, what has yeah. happening. But guys, before we move on, if you're someone looking to level up they are stock investing skills and you need a lot more guidance. We do have a one-on-one -on -one program called the Mentorship Program. If you're interested, you can apply it in the comment section or the description. Okay, so this is basically the final takeaway. Yeah. Uh, yes, uh, this particular equity fund from yeah. Afin, uh, Afin Huang is actually underperforming KLCI, yes. but that doesn't mean that other portfolios is underperforming. Some are actually outperforming yeah. KLCI by a lot yeah. so do check it check it out uh it's on their website and based on their position holdings right afin is actually pretty bullish on consumer product and services yeah. financial plantation yeah. and tech sector i mean even till this day la, yeah. as of uh, i mean according to their annual report that's what they state la. and based on the holdings also you can see these are yeah. the, quite of the largest one and uh the final takeaway is that the uh, october 2022 annual report yeah. has just been released so if you want to see the updated version of their uh what what stock have they been selling or buying you can actually check it out in their website uh maybe you put it the links in the description yeah. so it's easy for you to actually check it out and i think uh that's about it any further comments yeah so the, the thing i want to add is um you know something we talk a lot about the uh, sib program is actually the importance of portfolio allocation mm. so this uh, fun is okay. So the information is not here, but it's around forty-two million, right? Forty-two, uh, 40, 46, uh, Yeah, yeah. So if you see, yeah, if you see based on this one, yeah, yeah. So it's a bit higher today, yeah, right. And let's call it forty-five million. Mm. 
But what we did not put in the slides here is actually the allocation. So you're looking, I remember the largest position is 6%. Uh, yes. Is Yinsen. Right? Uh, yeah. Correct. So Yinsen and Timecom are like 6%, 5%. Now, that is actually a very small percentage for like a really successful stock uh, and a, a, a proven stock, right? Mm. And you can see, right, despite the, uh, you know, okay, you look at it, the top guys, uh, of the top five, two are in tech, one is in telecommunications, yep. right? So Timecom, Genetech, MPI. So if you go to here then, you're probably wondering, right? Like if the returns are so good, right? Like why is the returns only like that so, amount, so, uh, yeah. right? So the answer is very straightforward. You can see that- Yeah, the allocation- Telecoms uh, on media- It's only 4%. 4%, eh? right? Uh, oh wait, I'm here, 2%. Oh, 2% only. Yeah. yeah, okay. And then, that although I'm not sure if they, they classify Timecom as consumer, it could be, who knows? Uh, I doubt so, but- No, 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 it's on under Telecom. Telecom, right, okay. Yeah. And then tech is only 11%. Mm. So what am I trying to say? What I'm trying to say is that it's one thing to buy a good stock. It's another thing to buy at the right time. And yes. as you can see here, the stocks that they bought, I mean, a lot of them are stocks that I bought before and mm. I would- buy and you know, I wouldn't say much, but you can consider holding, right? right? And as you can see from the gains, they bought it at a good time. Mm -hmm. But why is it that they still lose money? Yeah, it's right? not- In the year, of course, yeah. overall you can see that they've made, but they could have made a lot more if they concentrate. Yeah, it's the allocation and also something yes. to do their position sizing also. Correct, uh, yeah. Correct. So- I mean, just to give a sense, uh, if we took, let's say the top five stocks here, and then you take the top, the worst five stocks here, and then you combine them, mm. their returns will probably yes. be better. 100%. Right? Yeah. So you, five good, five bad, but because the good are up Always, like yeah, 188, how, yeah. 163%, mm. but the bad is only like negative 42, negative 40%. So this is like my big takeaway for this. Mm. Now, I also want to clarify, this isn't a knock on the people managing the fund. And the reason they cannot do this is sometimes, now to be fair, it doesn't apply to this particularly, but mutual funds in general, they have a lot of capital. And so for them, like for example, this fund is 45 million. Mm. They put in the large position 6%. So that means the largest position is really 2.4 million. Mm. For those who for those of you who are in the market, you know that 2.4 million volume. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, it's pretty huge. I, you crash your system. Yeah, you could crash, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's why they have to be a bit more diversified. And of course, each of these mutual fund companies have their own risk management parameters, which usually means that they cannot invest a lot of money in a particular counter. And it might shock a lot of you all to know that 3% is considered like quite significant. Mm. Yep. So something at six percent is in a way like breaking industry norms. Yep. Uh so yeah, that's my big takeaway. Yeah, actually I have nothing much to comment <laughs> yeah. on other than fund managers have to be super careful. Uh, I yes. mean with their stock picks. You cannot like be super concentrated or so. If they are and let's say if they uh didn't perform like what they expected, exactly. of course they have to answer a lot of uh, they are investors, uh, the exactly. worries and everything. Yeah, so yeah. And they yeah, have to play safe. It's, uh, a, it's a whole topic. Safe. We can yeah. go like, there's actually a lot of other factors why yeah. they cannot do what they do. So yeah. again, it's not a knock on the fund managers. Kudos to the team for picking out so many great companies. Like even here, I can see really, if you break down industrial, right? Kobe did really well. Yep. Um, you've got Press Metal, obviously. Syntax, SKP, Super Scomnet, Scomnet. right? Mm -hmm. uh, VS, decent company. And then if you go down the list, right, DIC, DNO, they, mm -hmm. they got DNO, they got Genentech, they got Great Tech, they got MPI, uh, you know, things like that. So yep. they, they are great at what they do, it's just uh, highlighting the importance yep. of portfolio management. Yep, correct. Uh, and before we actually go. Yep, as usual. 
Oh yeah, we updated as promised. I mean, last week yes. we've been saying that we're going to be updating our yes. stock performance. So the, here it is. This is the December one? Yeah, this right. is the December. So yeah, we got one stock that is actually going to be almost two times, but yes. not yet that. It's at 78%. Uh, and you can actually check out all of this in our Fire Pro program. If you want to know what, uh, how we a actually taste. write reports. Yeah, if you want yeah, a taste on, of our reports, mm, uh, go peek. hop onto our free sample, see you know, whether these kind of reports work for you. These are very simple reports. No more than 15 minutes. You yeah. know, you just get a taste. Correct. And if you like it, then consider hopping on the program. If you don't, that's cool yes. as well. Thanks for all the support uh, uh, all this while. Yeah, and just to also just mention the links for this free sample is in the description and, and the comments. comments. Yeah, and I think that's about it for yep, today's video. Guys, uh, yeah. we'll see you in the next video as usual. Thanks for all the support. Ciao.